Hi guys, welcome to our science lesson. Up until now you had a task of reading and learning about plants and animals in hot countries and I hope that you understood everything you need to know about this topic. Uh, in order to check this, we are going to first have a little recap to see if everything is clear about this, this, this theme. So, first of all, when we talk about uh, hot places for living, we usually think, among others, uh, about deserts. So, what are deserts? A desert is a dry place. It gets lots of sunlight and little rain. There is no shade or water around except for a few oases uh, in a few places. Only a few kinds of plants and animals can live there. So here you have some of the images of deserts. So what about plants and animals? How do they live in such harsh conditions? Desert plants can hold water to use when they need it. Some, like the yucca for example, here it is, have thick leaves with a waxy coat. Others hold water in their stems. Cactus, for example, as you can see, shows a many adaptations to conserve water, me uh, meaning it has thickened, fleshy parts adapted to store water. And you probably saw cactus. I know this. So here is yucca. It is similar to a palm tree and it can be found in Arizona, for example, or a cactus in different shapes, different colors. But what about animals? So we know that plants can adapt to, to these hot conditions. What about animals? Let's see. As most deserts are hot, Desert animals have ways to stay cool and get water. Some of them, like the armadillo, for example, stay in the shade. They look for food at night when it gets cooler. Others, like the kangaroo rat, get water from their food. So, you can see some of the examples of animals that can live in these hot places such as desert. So you can recognize, I suppose that you can recognize these animals. You can see that there is a camel, armadillo. You can see the look uh, it has. It is covered in a protective shell, so it moves slowly until in danger. And it hunts mostly at night, but during the day it can hunt when it's cooler sometimes. Kangaroo rat, for example, lives in a burrows underground, and it spends most of their uh, they spend most of their day underground sleeping and come out at night to find food. There is a coyote. You know about coyote something, I suppose. And here it is: meerkat, desert tortoise, roadrunner, etc. So, these are some of the animals that can live in these harsh conditions, such as deserts. Okay, but when we talk about this, when we talk about hot places for living, and we say that some animals and plants that live there can adapt to, the, to these conditions, what we actually think about is adaptation. So remember when we talk about when we talked about Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution and adaptation, and if you can remember, and I will uh, remind you, uh, the theory of evolution and adaptation uh, supposes that uh, most animals and plants, actually living things, uh, will adapt to certain living conditions in order to survive. So you have different kinds of animals, different kinds of plants that can live in very cold or very hot uh, environments, but they adapt uh, by the way they uh, look or by the, the way they feed themselves, by the way they uh, walk or run in order to survive. So today 
we are going to take a closer look at these animal adaptations to extreme environments so that we can understand better the, the lessons that you had about these, these topics. Okay, so first of all, we are going to check some key terms in order for you to understand better the things we are going to talk about. Let's see. What is the environment? The environment is the land and climate where plants and animals live. Survival is the fight to stay alive. Adaptation is the way an animal or plant has changed to become more able to survive in its environment. Camouflage is the ability to hide or disguise yourself. Prey is an animal that is hunted and killed for food. Insulation is a layer of padding to keep the person, animal or plant warm. Minimize. What does it mean, minimize? To reduce something to its lowest level. Carnivore eats meat. Herbivore eats vegetables. And omnivore eats meat and vegetables. So, these are some of the key terms that we are going to mention during this lesson. I hope that you can understand now the meaning of these words. So let's see, <clears throat> here we have environmental conditions and characteristics of them that can be understood easily for you so that we can uh, later on uh, develop uh, the explanation for different kinds of animals and their adaptation. First of all, we have, we have rainforest. So in the rainforest, forest, it is hot and humid. It means there's a lot of uh, water in the, in the air. There, is a, there are a lot of predators all around, a lot of leaves. There is a competition for sunlight, water, food, and nutrients, meaning things that are good for you to eat. In the desert, and as we already know, it is very hot and very dry. There is a competition for water, uh, it's very windy and there are many sandstorms. There are long distances between food and water supplies. Burn, it's burning hot during the day and on the contrary, it's freezing at night. So it is very, very difficult to survive. On the mountains, uh, there are very cold temperatures for most of the year. It, there is a reduced oxygen at higher altitudes. Food can be difficult to catch. There is a rugged ground that can be very uneven and cold to walk on. And there are very few nutrients in the vegetation. And the last, polar. So as you know, temperatures rarely go about freezing. It's very, very, very cold. A lot of the prey lives in the ocean. Uh, there is a very bright sunlight that re reflects off the snow. The icy ground can be very slippery. Strong glare from the snow and ice is also something that can be very, uh, can make an obstacle for living. Okay, so let's now check. H how did these adaptation develop for different kinds of animals in different environments. First of all, we have a camel as an example, and you know, camel lives in a desert. So let's see what happened. So camel has three rows of eyelashes, thin, slot-like nostrils. It can consume up to 46 liters of water in one sitting. It has thick fur on the top of their bodies and thin fur elsewhere. It can run very, very fast. It has large, flat feet. Sorry, just a second. Okay, that's all. Now we have a snow leopard. So let's see. Snow leopard has small eyes. It has enlarged nasal cavity. 
It has shortened body parts such as limb and ears. It has the ability to eat an animal three times its size in order to survive, of course. Thick fur on soles of the feet. It has thick white coat. It has long tail. Okay, now let's see a spider monkey. I suppose that you already, uh, that you have already seen sometimes. So, spider monkey has quick movements and the ability to work as a team. It has strong, long tail. It has brown, gray or red fur. It's, uh, it has omnivorous diet. It can eat anything, both plants and animals. Uh, it has slow reproduction rate, up to five years between births. Now, a polar bear. It's very, it's very cute. I suppose you, you will agree with me. So, polar bears uh, have skin beneath their fur that is actually black. They have developed into strong swimmers. Even though they are so big, they can sw swim very well. Ho they have hollow and transparent fur. They have long, thick, curved claws. Thick layers of fur and body fat. Small bumps on their foot pads called papillae. And they have large paws. So, why did we uh, mention this? Why did we learn? Uh, why did we, did we uh, talk about this? We will see now. So, why do these adaptations happen? Let's see. So, first of all, for camel, if a camel can run very fast, this is because it has to travel quickly across the desert over long distances and to allow air to circulate underneath their stomachs to cool them down. If it can consume up to 46 liters of water in one sitting, it is because water is scarce. And this allows them to hydrate and replenish stored water very quickly. Why uh, does it have three rows of eyelashes? Well, simply because protection, it, is, it is a protection from sandstorms and strong winds. It protects their eyes. Uh, it has large flat feet because the, uh, they spread weight on soft sand. Thick fur on the top of their bodies and thin fur elsewhere, meaning this provides shade. Thick fur provides shade and thin fur aids heat loss. Why do they have thin slot like nostrils? Well, it prevents sand from entering the body and damaging breathing. Okay? Let's now see for the snow leopard adaptations. Why do they happen? So, snow leopard has thick white coat. Why? To keep him warm, to keep it warm and blend in with surroundings. It is an excellent way for hiding from prey so that he, it, it can hunt prey. Why does it have thick fur on soles of feet? It aids walking on cold ground. Enlarged nasal cavity it helps breathing in high altitude. Why does it have a long tail? Well, it stores fat and can be coiled for warmth. Shortened body parts, such as limb and ears, reduce potential for heat loss. And it has small eyes to reduce glare in bright conditions. Okay? Moving on to spider monkey adaptations. So let's see. We heard that uh, mon uh, spider monkey has omnivorous diet. That means that food is never in short supply. So from birds eggs to fruit, it can eat almost anything. Uh, it has long, strong tail that acts as an extra limb and allows them to hang and swing in trees easily. 
it has brown, gray or red fur to blend in with surrounding trees and avoid predators. Slow reproduction rate up to five years between births, it means that this allows them to focus on their babies while they are young, protecting and educating them. It lives high up in tree canopies to avoid predators. So this is also where the most nutritious leaves can be found. And it has quick movements and ability to work as a team, of course, to evade attackers to escape the danger and, of course, to survive. And now let's see for polar bear adaptations. So what happens with this, these adaptations? Uh, why do polar bears have hollow and transparent fur? To reflect light and camouflage them. This is why their fur looks white in the snow. If you didn't know this, this interesting fact. Small bumps on their foot pads, called papillae, uh, help them grip to icy surfaces that they can catch easily to icy surfaces. Long, thick, curved claws help them kill to kill and eat their prey. Large paws help them distribute their weight evenly and this is especially important when walking on ice. Their skin beneath their fur is black because it helps them absorb heat. And they have thick layers of fur and body fat, of course, to help them uh, keep warm. So, uh, we had uh, four examples of animal, adapt uh, animal adaptation in different extreme environments, different extreme surroundings. And we could see that all these species tried to survive in these circumstances by adapting to the surrounding. It means they changed their fur, changed their uh, paws, they uh, changed the, the way they walk, run, eat. It changed many of the things they do, of course. And the important thing is to remember, this didn't, didn't happen, this didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen for a week or for a month. It happened for a long, long, long time period. So you know this, we mentioned this when we talked about Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution adaptation. So these changes happened over many, many, many years so that now they can survive in these circumstances. So in general, when we talk about adaptations of animals and plants, and we have some of the characteristics of different extreme environments, we can think about what do these changes represent. So let's now see. If you have very hot climate, usually the adaptation uh, refers to reflective coat, long legs for heat loss, living underground. If you have very cold climate, you have uh, animals with thick coat, uh, short legs and fat layers. If you have a lot of predators nearby, it means the animal will develop camouflaged coat, the ability to climb and move quickly in order to escape its predators. If you have very little water nearby, that means that you ha will have the ability to drink, store lots of water able to move quickly over large distances. And if you have little oxygen in the atmosphere, that means that the animal will have large nasal cavity and chest, and it will probably be, be amphibious. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that I helped you to understand your uh, lesson units uh, from your student's book. And uh, I think that now we can understand better why do animals, certain animals look the way they do because 
of course, they had to adapt to their environments in order to survive. I hope to see you soon again. Bye!